Right now on APSU TV, burglar and fraud strike Montgomery County, primary elections, and the Nashville Zoo comes to Clarksville, plus local sports, weather, and more. APSU TV News starts right now. Well, good afternoon, Clarksville, and thanks for joining us. It's Friday, March 15th, and I'm Victoria Bolcom. And I'm Angela Peterson. Good afternoon and welcome. Montgomery County Sheriff's deputies are searching for a person wanted for breaking into a car and stealing a credit card and other valuable property. Detectives say it happened on Port Royal Road at night last month. The suspected thief took a driver's license, social security card, and credit card. Investigators say the person they're seeking used the credit card to make purchases locally. If you have any information, give police a call. In Memphis, Tennessee, Howard University students observed a group of young offenders showcasing their business skills. CNN's Shay Arthur has the story. It allowed you to open your mind to the possibilities. Inside the youthful offender unit of 201 Poplar, there's dozens of young men. It'll suck out all the moisture. Ages 18 to 25, Today, they are businessmen, complete with a tie. When this machine gets its job done, we put in its counterpart, the air purifier. One of them is 21-year-old Faru. We can't show you his face or reveal his full name for privacy reasons, but we're showing you his plan. In jail is what you make it. Faru and his team of other youthful offenders showing their business model they've developed over the last month. We specialize in water and mold damage. What we come in and do is we will come and scan the walls with this infrared laser. Faru's company, Memphis Mold Masters, is far from the only business in the room. There's a specialized dry cleaning and laundromat, a company centering around cleaning supplies and crispy cuts. <laughs> A barber shop and salon developed with the purpose to give back to the community, as well as other businesses. This is why it's called a program pod. We're programming them for the future so they can have some kind of structure. Somewhere in their young adult lives, these young men made a mistake. But the purpose of this pod is to get them back on the right track, prepare them for life outside the jail. We need to give them a chance. Uh, that they never had before, uh, that they're looking for. It was also a, a learning experience. We got to teach things to one another and learn things from one another. Today, also interacting with students from Howard University in town from Washington, D.C. on their alternative spring break. The students listen to the different business models. Taking that experience and being able to giving them feedback and telling them, you know, you can do stuff after this is a great, great experience, honestly. But sophomore Zina Aduo says the students benefited too. For a lot of the students, uh, you know, we're not used to being in this environment. Um, a lot of people have never been to a jail. In the end, the top three businesses were awarded. First place winner is... The blue ribbon going to Faru and his team from Memphis Mold Masters. The win... Hopefully, a look into the future. What you see, what you see on paper, we want to put it into existence. So you actually want to do this when you... Oh, yeah, no doubt. Jail is supposed to be a correctional facility, and I think, as you can see right here, we are, this is a correctional facility. We are being corrected from our old ways, and we're becoming new people. Shay Arthur, WREG, News Channel 3. Dozens of people are dead in New Zealand due to terror attacks at two mosques. CNN Karen Kaif has the story. I'm a specialist. I don't feel safe anymore. Dozens of people are dead following unprecedented terror attacks in New Zealand. The carefully orchestrated massacres targeted two mosques in Christchurch during Friday prayers. Witnesses describe the chaos of the scenes. Then everybody just run to the back doors just to save themselves. I don't know how many people died. I heard the back sound the gun, and the second one I heard, I ran. Lots of people were sitting in the floor. New Zealand's Prime Minister is calling it one of the darkest days in her country's history. Clearly what has happened here is an extraordinary and unprecedented act of violence. Dozens were transported to a local hospital for treatment. Injuries ranging from gunshot wounds to the, you know, the head and face and 
um, arms, legs and torso, um, and soft tissue injuries. War leaders have condemned the attacks. President Trump tweeting, the U.S. stands by New Zealand. Queen Elizabeth said she is deeply saddened by the appalling events. And Australia's Prime Minister asking for flags to be flown at half-staff. One person has been charged with murder in connection with the attacks. Three others are in custody, and police are working to determine their involvement. I'm Karen Gaifa reporting. You can let Clarksville Police know how you feel about police body-worn cameras, also known as BWCs. Clarksville Police are using 147 body-worn cameras. The department has been approved for a second federal grant for more cameras, but the grant requires matching funds from city council. The department has launched a new survey on the cameras. It's open until the end of this month. You can complete the survey online, or you can fill out a paper copy at any of these locations. Clarksville Police Headquarters downtown, North or South Precinct, City Hall, or the Gas and Water Services Center. CPD will also hold town hall meeting at, about the BWC program in the coming weeks. Fort Campbell wants to hear from all of you active and retired military and your families as well as Army civilians about how satisfied you are with health and readiness on post. Take the Community Strengths and Themes Assessment online. The survey's purpose is to create a snapshot of the quality of life, health, safety, and satisfaction within the Army installation environment. Your responses are confidential. The survey will be open through May 30th and takes 10 to 15 minutes to fill out. The findings will be available by the end of the summer. Suicide is an ongoing issue among soldiers and veterans, and local leaders in Clarksville are taking steps to prevent that. In 2016, Veterans Affairs released a new study that revealed an average of 20 veterans a day died from suicide in 2014. The Clarksville group spent last Thursday and Friday creating a public health approach to prevent suicide. Mayor Joe Pitts said, quote, I'm proud of this group, which is following through on the city of Clarksville's commitment to lead our community's battle against suicide. This is a meaningful and tangible way to show our support of the men and women at Fort Campbell, their family, and our veterans, end quote. A Tennessee man was injured early Thursday morning when a falling tree crashed into a house. Five people were home at the time, a mother, her two children, their grandmother, and the grandmother's boyfriend. The boyfriend is the man who was hurt. He was taken to the hospital and expected to make a full recovery. The damage comes after the family lost everything in a house fire three years ago. That was a different house, and this is the one they have been renting. Stay tuned for weather and our political corner right after the break. You don't want to simply be another face in the crowd. You want to excel, to make the most of your time on this planet. That means a decision must be made. You have to find a place where you can shine, a community that fosters your potential, a home where you can write your own future. It's time to become the person you've dreamed of being. It's time to become a governor at Austin P. Welcome back. We finally got a break from the rain and some warmer temperatures. Let's head over to Zach Pugh for a flood update and a look at what's coming next for our weekend weather. Well, thanks, Victoria. The Tennessee Emergency Management Agency says four weather-related deaths have been recorded after heavy rainfall caused flooding of homes, farms, and businesses starting on February 23rd. TEMA says 83 of 95 counties reported flooding damage. Now work continues on Interstate 24 in Middle Tennessee and Interstate 40 at the Tennessee North Carolina state line after landslides and rock slides blocked those highways. Now I-24 eastbound has been temporarily widened around the side of the slide to accommodate two lanes of traffic while crews continue working on permanent slope repairs. Approximately 36,000 cubic yards of material has been removed from the slope in order to make the area safe for drivers. Now, local Clarksville roads have been affected by flooding 
Lock C and Lock B, South at the River Bottoms, Shelton Ferry Road, South Side Road, CB Road, Lyle Wood Road, Levi Road, and Powers Place have all been affected. You can find out more about your local roads by checking out the Montgomery County website at mcgtn.org. And McCracken County had to declare a state of emergency on Thursday due to tornado damage. There were dozens of farm structures that were destroyed in addition to homes, businesses, and a church. The peak wind speed was reported at 125 miles per hour, and the preliminary report rated the damage as an EF2. Only one non-life threatening injury has been reported. Some roads are temporarily closed until crews can clear the debris and down power lines. Now let's take a look at our current national temperatures. New York is sitting at 62 degrees. Uh, Chicago's at a good 39. Atlanta's at 58. Over here we have Denver at 37. <clears throat> Seattle is sitting up here at 53 degrees. And Los Angeles, the lucky one of us all, is at 71 degrees currently. Today's highs, of course. Uh, Knoxville is sitting over here at 60 degrees, Chattanooga at 61, Clarksville is at 48, Nashville at 52, and Memphis is down here also at 52. Today's lows, we're going to start with Memphis here at 34 degrees, Nashville sitting at 33 degrees, Chattanooga at 36, Knoxville at 34, and Clarksville also at 31 degrees. Now, right now, our current temperature outside is 48 degrees. Wind is west at 12 miles per hour. So it is a windy day, and there is not really a chance of rain, but the humidity is high. So in case you want to bring a jacket because of that cool breeze, you might want to keep that there and maybe pack an umbrella just in case. Uh, of course, tonight's temperatures are going to be 43 degrees, wind at northwest and 8 miles per hour. So if you're going out, once again, make sure you kind of keep that umbrella around with you. Um, keep a light jacket because the wind chill is what's getting everybody right now. Now, our five-day forecast, we have a Saturday here at a sunny 50, uh, high for 53 and a low of 30 degrees. So Saturday looks like probably one of the best days we've had in a long time. Sunday, we start getting a little bit more cloud coverage with uh, mostly sunny um, with a high of 56 and a low of 33, partly cloudy on Monday with a high of uh, 54 and a low of 32. Uh, Tuesday is a high of 56 and a low of 35, also partly cloudy and Wednesday is cloudy with a high of 57 and a low of 38. And that's the week that we've probably hoped for for a long time with not much rain coming in, which is probably the most blessing thing that we've had in a while. But that's all for weather. Now let's take a look at, polit uh, at local politics with Sydney Hawkins. Thanks, Zach. Austin P. Professor John Phillips is offering a course titled American Greatness in the Era of President Trump. I had a chance to sit in on his class yesterday. Putting the name of President Trump in a course title is a provocative move, and I know that. Uh, it's going to provoke um, emotions no matter what your political views are. Judgments of greatness um, possible from outside, so to speak. Does the opinion of mankind count? Because, of course, as we all know, we might think we're great, but the rest of the world might think that we're awful. One of the main influences for me was to offer a course that uh, dealt with contemporary issues. Uh, one of the things about our course catalog, I don't know if you've looked at it recently, is that a lot of the courses have very generic titles. You know, comparative government, uh, American government, legislative process. Uh, none of those are particularly exciting, uh, at least not to me. And if I were a prospective student, I, I would look at those classes and I don't know if I'd be really excited to take them. Look up the lives and accomplishments of Frederick the Great, Peter the Great, Alexander the Great, and Ashoka the Great. Um, all, all, uh, great, all great figures, all figures who have been called great. Uh, and I want you to see if you can find, for next Tuesday, some areas of commonality between these people. A bill that would determine which public restrooms transgender people can use is advancing in the state legislature. A House subcommittee agreed to send the proposal to a full hearing this week. The Associated Press reports nearly a dozen protesters held signs showing their opposition. The sponsor of the bill wants the law to specify that public places include public restrooms and locker rooms designated for single-sex and multi-person use. The Montgomery County Election Commission reports Republican Bill Powers and Democrat Juanita Charles will be moving on to the District 22 Senate election on April 23rd. 
Bill Powers received a total of 2,483 election day, absentee, early votes combined, and Juanita Charles received a total of 960 election day, absentee, and early votes combined. Independents Doyle Clark and David Cunning will, did not run in the primary, will also run on April 23rd. The Mayor's Opioid Task Force is merging into a larger countywide group called the Allies for Substances Abuse Prevention of Montgomery County, also known as ASAP. ASAP teamed up with the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Prevention to create an anti-drug alliances. Mayor Pitts thanks community members who stepped up to help merging with ASAP possible. Still ahead, APSU Sports with Ashton Rich and Claire LaRose. APSU TV News will be right back. You don't want to simply be another face in the crowd. You want to excel, to make the most of your time on this planet. That means a decision must be made. You have to find a place where you can shine, a community that fosters your potential, a home where you can write your own future. It's time to become the person you've dreamed of being. It's time to become a governor at Austin P. Welcome back. Now for what's happening in APSU sports, let's head over to Ashton Rich and Claire LaRose for a look at your Gov Sports update. Thanks, Victoria. The rain in Clarksville <laughs> has finally stopped and our men's and women's tennis teams are able to compete outdoors. Caitlin Black has the story. Over spring break, the men's and women's teams traveled and were able to get a few outdoor matches under their belt. Shelby Mulligan, the athletic trainer for the teams, works closely with the athletes on a daily basis. So we went down to Georgia and Florida. Um, the weather was great. Uh, we got to play three outdoor games, um, and that's going to give us some good practice for our uh, move to outdoors competition for conference. Well, we didn't get to practice a lot outside here at home, but the good thing that we went to Florida for spring break, I think that helped us to prepare for this one too. The men's tennis captain, Chad Woodham, shares his game plan as they take on Butler University. Uh, my plan today was just to go out there and get my feet moving early in the warm-up and uh, have like a hurt ankle right now, so in the warm-up it felt good, so I was ready to go in the match. We were just trying to be aggressive the whole time when we were playing out there. Baby and Schmidt and Tatiana Lopez from the women's tennis team are there to cheer on the men. They come to our matches, we try to be at their matches, we support each other, we cheer for each other, and yeah, we get along really well. Chad Woodham reflects on the years of preparation and how they have helped him grow. Yeah, I've had four years of practice, so after four years, it's, I've definitely gotten a lot better since freshman year, and I matured a lot in my game, too. The men didn't find the outcome they were looking for against Butler, but the team is still optimistic about the weeks to come. I think um, our future looks bright. They played very well, and I'm looking forward to conference tournament. Shout out to Kaylin Black for that piece, right, Claire? Oh, yeah. The Austin P. women's tennis team was victorious Wednesday night against the Flyers of Dayton, Ohio. The Govs dismantled the Flyers 7-0 to extend their unbeaten season to 11 games. The Govs take to the road next Wednesday to face the Lions of the University of Northern Alabama. The men's and women's basketball team wrapped up their seasons last week with two unfortunate losses during the OVC tournament. Mm -hmm. The women's team battled hard but lost 57-68 against Tennessee Tech. The men's team made it all the way through to the semifinals but couldn't keep up their winning momentum as they fell 67-83 against Belmont last Friday. Although both their seasons came to an end, a few players were able to walk away with some well-earned awards. Kaisha Gregory was named first team All-OVC as well as Terry Taylor, Chris Porter Button. Way to go, Govs. Yeah, CPB, Terry Taylor, huge players for the Govs. CPB especially will be missed. But in other news, the men's golf team came in eighth place at the Jackrabbit Invitational in Boulder City, Nevada over spring break. The Govs top performer was junior Michael Bussey, who posted scores of 77, 74, and 71 during the three rounds of the event. The Golf Govs are in action once again at the Wofford Invitational in Spartanburg, South Carolina on April 1st and 2nd. The Austin P women's golf team jumped their way into fifth place last Tuesday at the 2019 Spring Break Shootout. 
The governor's put together three rounds below 300 for the first time in program history. Freshman Taylor Deadman had herself a great day. She sought six under on par four offerings and sank a team high 10 birdies. Mm -hmm. Deadman's success at the spring break shutout led her to be named the OVC Women's Golfer of the Week. The women's golf team will be back in less than a week as they head to Sorrent Sorrento, Florida for the Citrus Classic. Well, big shout out to the women's golf team. In other news, the Govs softball team went 1-1 one one against North Alabama this past Sunday in Clarksville. The bats were hot in game one for the Govs as six different governors recorded a hit. Senior ace Morgan Rackle struck out five batters while giving up one run in five innings. In game two, the Lions of UNA shut out Austin P 4-0. Gov softball will be competing in the Miami Invitational in Oxford, Ohio over the weekend. The Austin P baseball team opened up Ohio Valley Conference play with a doubleheader against Murray State last Sunday. The Govs won their first game 2-0 but lost the second game 3-11. The Govs met Murray State again on Monday but couldn't secure a win as they lost 4-0. The girls were hungry for a win as they headed to Carbondale, Illinois to face Southern Illinois on Tuesday. Unfortunately, the Govs were short one run as they fell 3-2 in non-conference play. The Austin Peay baseball team plays at 6 and 9 at the hand. Come out and support your fellow Govs. Austin Peay football had its annual pro day on Monday and six current governors ran drills and worked out for the NFL scouts. The highlight of the day was the overall athleticism of standout wide receiver DJ Montgomery. Montgomery posted a 4.37 40-yard dash, a 10-foot, 7-inch broad jump, and a 37.5-inch vertical, all wow. of which would have put Montgomery in the top five of those drills at the NFL Combine. NFL teams in attendance were the Cleveland Browns, Tennessee Titans, and Atlanta Falcons. That's all for sports. Now back to Victoria at the desk. If you want to go on a guided hike, 2019 is your year to make that dream a reality. Rangers at all 56 state parks in Tennessee will be offering free guided hikes on March 23rd. The hikes range from easy to adventurous. You can hike Dunbar Cave State Park's three-quarter mile short loop trail with a park guide from 1 to 2 on the 23rd. Prepare for the weather, have sturdy footwear, and bring water and snacks. If you want more information, check the Tennessee State Parks website. The Nashville Zoo visited Austin Peay this week. Logan Farrell has the story. Things got wild in the Sunkiss building on Tuesday afternoon when the Nashville Zoo brought several live animals onto Austin Peay's campus. This event included five animals you wouldn't get to see at the Nashville Zoo because they are animal ambassadors, which means their home is actually behind the scenes. So my name is Josh Wiseman. I'm an outreach specialist keeper uh, for the Nashville Zoo. So I get to do all the fun keeper stuff, cleaning, working, training with animals. Um, but the main part of my job is actually to take animals away from the zoo um, and do outreach programs at local schools, community centers, churches, camps, college campuses, um, all over Middle Tennessee. We're also raising money for Walden's Puddle, which is a fundraiser for the Wildlife Society. So we're selling baked goods, any contributions that the students can make, teachers can make, we're taking those donations and we're gonna give them to the society so they can benefit from it. The Nashville Zoo has a major interest in conservation efforts, which is why they were invited onto campus. Grant, which is Student Academic Success Initiative, which is supposed to bring faculty and students together outside of class for something that is likely to increase student academic engagement. Uh, but for me, I thought that what we could really use on campus is more awareness and interest in conservation issues. Students were engaged and there were even students waiting outside because the room was so full. To protect themselves from predators. <laughs> I'm Logan Farrell, APSU TV News. March 12th, IHOP celebrated its annual free pancake day with their Flip It Forward for Kids campaign. According to IHOP's website, simply visit any IHOP and get a free short stack of original buttermilk pancakes. We donate to help children battling critical illnesses. Each stack served on IHOP free pancake day helps us flip it forward for kids in need. Assistant Manager of the Wilma Rudolph IHOP, Ashley Chambers, said, quote, We call it flipping it forward. We raise money for the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, end quote. The Clarksville Montgomery County School System is currently preparing local application forms for voluntary pre-K in Tennessee, a grant-funded program for the 2019-2020 school year early this March. The Tennessee Department of Education will post application information, including dates, times, and locations of application events on their website by March 15th. A trooper pulled over by 
pulled over to address a double parked car and quickly realized it was made of snow. Don't be fooled, that's Snow Mustang. It's a Snow Mustang. A state trooper had to share his surprise when he found it in Chadron, Nebraska. What in the heck? He also got in on the fun by giving the double parked snowmobile a fake ticket. Some people make snowmen, not the people in the northwest corner of the panhandle. They make snow cars. The snowy stang was reportedly the work of a local businessman and his two kids. I know trucks are always trying to add more horsepower, but this is ridiculous. Drivers on a Texas highway were taken aback when they spotted this horse riding in the bed of a pickup truck traveling at roughly 70 miles an hour. I mean, I guess it's better than hoofing it. To be fair, the horse looks stable and appears to be enjoying itself despite the long face. Police did talk to the horse's owner and confirmed the animal is safe. The owner said mechanical issues with his main transport vehicle forced him to be saddled with this spur of the moment option. All right, there's good luck, and then there's ridiculously good luck. This super lucky Richmond woman hit the Virginia lottery 30 times in a single drawing. Yes, 30 times. Deborah Brown says she just had a feeling about a particular series of numbers when she bought 30 lottery tickets. Her lucky numbers earned her $5,000 for each ticket for a total of $150,000. Wow. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. So guys, uh, the student directed plays are this Saturday, and I'm in one of them. Uh, it's the variations. Oh man! It's the variations of the Death of Trotsky. That one is directed by Brett Carson, and Babbles in Arms, uh, directed by Zach Collum. So please come support. It's free. It's on Saturday. It's at seven o'clock. So if you guys don't have anything going on. Well, if it's free, I'll be there. Yeah. I was like, you said, you said, you said free, right? Yeah, it's yeah, free, 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 free. free. Yeah. I'm not busy on Saturday. Yeah. 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 That's great. There you go. Plus, you got St. Patrick's Day, you know, coming up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's, That's my awesome. sister's Whoa. birthday, too. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to the sister. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Anybody have any plans? Any St. Patrick's Day plans? Sleep in? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sleep? Yeah, I've Sleep and work. I've really been wanting to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Me neither. Day. I, like, yeah. I've always yeah. worn green so, like, random people don't come up and pick yeah. me. And then I'm like, yeah, here like, you go. It's, you know, wearing green. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like that's a bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happened. yeah. It's not. Hey, you're let me pinch you real quick. Okay, sure. Yeah, we just <laughs> met, but I'm going to go pitch you. Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, what are you doing? I know uh, there was one time I was at a grocery store, and this lady, like, she just, like, I wasn't wearing green. I was, like, wearing gray or something like that, like some uh -huh. generic color, and she just came up. She was like, it's St. Patrick's Day, and I was like, lady. <laughs> People are crazy. <laughs> People are well, that's all for this edition of your Govs News Weekend Update. Be sure to join us in the uh, interactions by liking us on Facebook at APSU TV Clarksville and Instagram at APSU underscore TV. Thanks for watching another edition of your Govs News Weekend Update. Have a good weekend. And as always, let's, let's go, go B. B.